Hi, everyone. This is Kristen DeFrancisco. I'm actually not coming to you remotely at the moment. I have been spending some office hours on Wednesday mornings, which today is, uh, in my office and giving some teachers a chance to come in and pick up some things that they're going to need to teach your kiddos remotely. So I am here in my office, very lonely in the building for sure. Uh, I wanted to thank you for coming out and watching this video. Um, I would also like to give a thank you out to Anna Villarreal, who is the CEO and founder of Life Story Health, um, a, a very progressive women's health company. And her YouTube channel arm, The Doctor Weighs In, who's given us some space here to be able to post these videos and also uh, a place for their, them to just kind of sit for you to go in and look at multiple times if you want. This is, this is proven, I think, going to be the easiest way for me to get out to you with some explanations around what we're doing in Arlington and at Gibbs, but also it's all in one place so that you can be then going back to the, these videos as much as you want to. And, you know, a perk and bonus is, is that there's some really great material on the Dr. Ways In that will also be interesting to you. Um, working with Anna, she's going to make sure to be putting some things up that would be about kids and in the education field. But there's also some wonderful ways for you to take a look at some videos and stay healthy. It's, it's provided me some balance, most definitely. I, I'm grateful for the opportunity. So thank you, Anna. And without any further ado today, what I would like to talk with you a little bit about is how Arlington has done what they've done so far. I've gotten lots of questions about, you know, why didn't we move a little bit faster? I've also gotten parents who are coming in and saying, you know, this is the perfect speed. Uh, I have parents that are asking me to slow down. So I wanted to give everybody an, a bit of an overview about why we rolled out the way that we rolled out and what we were thinking about specifically at Gibbs as we did this rollout for our sixth graders. Um, so hopefully this will give you a little bit of a of a, a peek into that. I'm gonna share my screen with you now so that you can see the presentation that I've put together for this particular segment. I have titled this segment, What, When, Why, and How? because I'm hoping that that's what you get out of, out of listening to me talk a little bit about what the last couple of weeks have, have looked like. I am first going to start with Arlington Public Schools. So some things to remember and note is thus far we've been concentrating on enrichment and deeper learning. We have been training teachers and building remote infrastructure at all levels. Um, we've been making sure students have access to technology, food, housing, health and wellness resources. And we've been thinking deeply about equity and access. So as we've rolled out, you know, there's been an order to how we're making sure that we're actually gonna be able to get out to all families and to get out to all students. Um, and that took a little bit of time. There's, there's lots of children in our district and we feel like at this point, we've been able to secure all of those items. Um, and now kids are actually able to access more through technology. Uh, we've got meals available. We have made sure that all of the, all children that we were worried about housing are safe and have housing. And we've also pushed out lots of health and wellness resources out to families. So, you know, it was really important that we start there. That was our foundation. And once Arlington was able to do that, we could start to think a little bit more about what we were gonna do individually as a school. So specifically at Gibbs, we've been processing what it means for our students in the following areas, social, emotional, developmentally, what their family life might look like right now, and then, and then finally academically. So as you can see, all of those pieces ahead of academics really needed to be in place for us in order to feel like we were able to come out with some academic work that students would be able to access. We've looked at our schedule. We modified our six-day cycle. We've adjusted it to a Monday through Friday cycle. Much easier for everybody to, to follow remotely. It also helps us stay asynchronous, which is meaning that we want to make sure we're getting out to kids in a way that they can access 
not depend dependent on a certain time of day because we can't pretend to understand what it's like for all of your families as you're navigating new schedules at home. Um, we're, we're trying to remember the skills that we would be want students to be developing if they were still here in school. And one of those is the release of responsibility. And so while we understand that parents are going to be scaffolding and helping kids in these uncharted times, we also want to be able to structure our work in a way that we're still paying attention to releasing responsibility out to students. As sixth graders, they do need to start being a little more independent about planning their schedules and managing their time. And so we've been mindful about that as we've been releasing work. The three U's are something that in our school where we talk about all the time when we're here. Um, we always speak about being unified, understanding and unstoppable with students. So helping students to understand what's happening right now is one of the most important aspects of our work and our partnerships for families. Uh, we also want to become unified about how things are going and how we're operating during our weeks away. It's essential, essential for the success of our, our sixth graders. We want to help sixth graders still feel unstoppable by designing ways for them to have contact with their teachers and classmates and complete activities that help them feel academically successful. So there's our lens for, for being understanding unified and unstoppable. And I'll talk a little bit about how we're presenting that to kids in a few minutes. Uh, we're also keeping in mind that we've made a shift. We look at our multi layers of support when we're in school. And a simplified explanation of that is that when we approach our work, we think about what our tier one responsibilities are. And that's really the foundation for what we do. So most children will access here in this space. All students receive tier one instruction. And for most, it is, it is exactly what they need in order to move along and be successful. Tier two instruction is an intervention for some of our students and they receive everything from the tier one space, but we also add in layer in this tier two space to help them feel successful. And then finally we have tier three and that's a deeper intervention and it's added to tier one and tier two supports so that these interventions are delivered to a smaller group of children. Notice that it is not absent of the layers before we are supplementing, not supplanting anything for our students. And you can really apply this, this concept to anything. You can apply it to stress. You know, some, some people really deal with stress very well and tier one things are going to help them move forward. Others, you know, um, they're going to need more interventions to help them with stress and anxiety. Um, and it could be up, up to tier three. You can apply this to a new skill you are learning. You can apply this to medical care. Um, the scenarios that, uh, that are explained here will hopefully help you to also understand that when we're in a pandemic like this, you need to move everybody to the right. So tier one is no longer in a place for the majority of your group. They need more. Um, what do they need? How do we provide it? That's what we've been talking about over those, those last five weeks. The tier two group, it's become larger. It's probably most of your kids right now temporarily until you set up the new norms. And tier three, they, these interventions tend to be even deeper. And oftentimes you need to deliver them one-to-one. -one. So once we've moved everybody to the right, it explains why we've taken some time to really figure out what it is all of our students are gonna need during this time. How do we do that? Well, because Gibbs has such a wonderful infrastructure on the day-to-day, absent a pandemic, we've been able to shift. So we've used advisory, which is the smallest community in our building to do outreach and to assess what our tiers should look like and who may need what. We've used our learning communities or our exploratory learning communities or our curriculum areas, which is a little bit of a larger group. Um, they've been meeting to develop curriculum and to just be consistent. What vocabulary are we all going to use for, for students so that they have an easier time, an easier learning curve? as we're working away from our school. And then our school, that's the largest community where the administration is working really to tie this all together. That's where you get my announcements. That's where you get Ms. Salvatore's announcements. Um, and we're working to even vary those so that kids have some different experiences from the two of us, but are also receiving information similar to those from advisory and their teachers. Um, this helps students to feel like the whole community is on the same page. Uh, students and parents will get a consistent message this way. 
how do we explain this to students? So uh, it's one thing to talk to you about this as adults that can process it, but we're also thinking about how do we get this out to students? Uh, I created the document you may or may not have seen called Understanding Remote Learning. And I will actually pull that document up now so that you can see it. This document went out to students about a couple of weeks ago. And basically what we wanted students to be able to see is that while they're away from school, there are gonna be some things that are different and there are gonna be some things that are the same. Um, here they, they got an, an understanding of what we were doing in those first couple of weeks. Um, they also got an understanding of what we would do to communicate with them on the daily. Um, they got an understanding of which academics would be coming out to them and why we were staggering the academics. They got an understanding of what does a schedule look like? We need to create schedules for ourselves now. So we gave them some common vocabulary, an academic block. What is an academic block? What does it look like? What should go in an academic block? We talked about the importance of free time and tried to give a menu of what that might look like. You can actually see in this video, there's a couple of students who have popped on this document or are looking at it right now. Uh, we also talked about reflection time, that at the end of the day, it's important to reflect on what it is you're learning and that teachers usually help you to do that. So you can do that with grown-ups, you can do that with friends. So how do you turn that block into schedule that works for you? We gave a sample schedule here. Um, this is a little bit pers more prescriptive than I would have liked, but I think some students actually needed this prescriptive kind of a schedule. They may have just taken this and used it. But for your families, it might depend on what is working for you if you have two working grown-ups at home or, or how that looks for your family, younger siblings needing to share technology. So wanting to give them the responsibility of trying to build a schedule. They did also receive a template here, which I will show in the next segment, which is going to be about scheduling. And the template here, of course, is linked for them to go take a peek at it. It seems like a lot. It probably feels like a lot to them. But as you can see in this last paragraph, we refer to those U's. We definitely understand that this is a lot of things to take in at once and being responsible for your learning is important. We also know that if we are unified in what we have to do while we are at home, we will be able to get through this. If we all try to figure out a learning schedule that works, then we will be ready to come back to school when this is all over. Remember that you've learned how to be unstoppable and following this helpful document to make a schedule will help you to do just that. And so this really ends the this part of our segment. Um, I feel like I'm hoping that you will stop sharing my screen so that you can, you can see me again. Um, I want to thank you for, for tuning in. Um, I think this is a way for me to really help feel like I've been thorough as I'm explaining things out to you via email. Maybe not always the best way for everyone to understand. Um, so I'm hoping this adds another layer to that. Uh, please know that I will be doing uh, more of these segments. My, my hope is to do one every week. Um, this week you'll you'll have more than one because I'm catching up a little bit. The next segment will be on scheduling and how to help your child get that schedule in place as we move into what will be next week, week six of remote learning. Um, and also, you know, I don't know what the direction, I don't know what's going to happen or, or how we will shift our, our approach to what we're teaching, but we certainly want to make sure that we've got schedules in place for kids so that if we do need to pivot to some deeper learning um, beyond what students have already experienced in class, they'll be ready to do that. So again, I'm Kristen DeFrancisco, principal of Give Sixth Grade School. Thank you for listening. Look forward to seeing you in the next segment.